Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and I am the pastor of Cornerstone Community Church, and I want to invite you to our service today. It starts at 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, that's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have you join us for our service. Our doors open at 1045, and again, as I said before, our service starts at 11 a.m. Let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the wonderful songs we're going to sing, the preaching of the word, and the prayers that we're going to offer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm reaching back to a dear old hymn, and it's called, He Keeps Me Singing. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus with the sweet and low. Fear not, I am. Fear not, I am. With thee still in all of the lives and flows. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Just let me move this over a little bit over here so that we can sing them in. All my life was wrecked with sin and strife. Disco filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the stumbling cords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. singing as I go, feasting on the riches of His grace, resting in His sweltering wing, always looking on His smiling face, that is what I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. the starry sky, I shall wing my flight to woods unknown, that I shall reign with him on high, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I say. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Embrace my fears, relieve. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe. Savior, Lord, there is 
there's none like you all of my days I want to praise the wonders of Well, today we're going to be sharing from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So, Father, we ask your blessing upon this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we get a picture of how Paul actually was in the city of Corinth when he arrived from Athens. He says, when I came to you, my brothers... I did not come with the eloquence of superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony of God. For I had resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and with much trembling. My message that I brought my preaching was not with the wise and persuasive words of men, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so also that your face would not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. So when Paul came to the city of Corinth, he says, I didn't come with this eloquence of superior wisdom. He says, I didn't come across as some great moral teacher or some philosopher or or maybe some orator. He says, I just simply came with a simple message. I wasn't trying to give you the philosophy of man. I wasn't trying to give you the principles of Socrates or Plato. I'm not a Stoic or Epicurean philosopher. He says, I am a simple man. Now, listen to what he said. But not, but he's, he says, I proclaim to you the testimony about God. He says, I came to tell you my testimony. I came to tell you what Jesus Christ did in my life and what Jesus Christ will do in your life. Remember, Paul had found Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and was given his call to preach to the Gentiles. Now, as we have talked about before, it was in Corinth that Paul actually made the decision to preach exclusively to the Gentiles. And it was interesting that as he did that, he shared about what God had done for him, how that God had taken him from as a Jew, uh, thinking that he was on the right track, to actually finding out that he was on the right track by serving Jesus Christ and proclaiming about Jesus Christ as well. Now listen to this. He, he says, I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul reset his message. 
He's decided to make it very clear. He decided that he was only going to preach about Jesus Christ and him crucified. You see, what had happened to him in Athens is that he had, you know, he gave a great speech. When you read in Acts chapter 17, you say, that's tremendous. He even used a Greek uh, poet to kind of emphasize the point. But what happened to him was that he was literally laughed off the hill. So Paul made a decision that he was only going to preach about Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his broken body and shed blood, and all the benefits of heaven that came because of that. And also as well, he wanted to introduce them to the eternal and abundant life that Jesus Christ had given him and now that he was receiving in as well. Now, he says, when I came to you, he says, I came to you in three different ways. He says, I came to you, first of all, in weakness. I came to you in fear and I came to you with much trembling. Paul was in a dark period of his life and he wasn't this man of faith and power in this great hour. But the beauty of the situation was that Paul then was relying exclusively on the strength of Jesus Christ and on the message of Jesus Christ. He wasn't trying to use his superior intellect. He wasn't trying to use his training in oratory or debate. He had just decided, let's keep it simple, boy. And that's exactly what he did. He was not in the best physical shape. He certainly was fearful. He was, you know, he had suffered much already because of the gospel. And so when he came to Corinth, he wasn't sure about the atmosphere that he was about to embark on. And when he also came, that's when the Lord came to him and said, Paul, don't be afraid. He says, speak on for I have many people in this city. And Paul did, and he stayed on for a year and a half. Paul also said this, he said this, um, my message and my preaching were not with the wise and persuasive words of man. He says, I did not come to you today to give you the eloquence or the philosophy of wisdom. He says, I didn't come to show you some enigma or to give you some wise or pithy saying or some motivational comment or cliche. He says, I decided that I was going to give you and I was going to rely on the power of God. That's what he said. I decided that it was going to be a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Now, of course, signs and wonders do follow those who believe. Now, there are people out there who believe that uh, the signs and wonder miracles ended with the apostolic age. And I, I feel sorry for them because the simple fact is that they are limiting God in what he can do in their lives and in their churches when he should just allow God to do whatever God wants to do. And God is going to be God. The one thing that I have discovered about God is God is not concerned about your perception of him. He will work as he will work. Now, there's a wonderful scripture called uh, 1 Corinthians, I should say Hebrews 13, 8, that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Based on that, I believe that God does the same thing that he did back in the book of Acts as he does today. And I believe that we need to be open to God to do that. And if your pastor happens to believe that, that, you know, the fact that it ended with the apostolic age and that's not happening in a church, that's perfectly fine. But I do feel sorry for those who are promoting that because the simple fact that they are limiting God and limiting themselves in what God can do in their world today. He says, I came with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. You know, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18 says, these signs will follow them who believe. Now, in Paul's case, of course, he saw incredible miracles because God was confirmed his his uh, his uh, word. Now he says that your faith may not rest on man's wisdom. Paul did not want his message or the or the faith that they had based upon man's wisdom. Man's wisdom can only go so far. Man's resources can only go so far. Man's talents can only go so far. But he says that they would be, of course. Um, resting on God's power. 
He says, I want you to know that there is resurrection power available to you today. The same thing that God did in my life, he can do in your life, is what Paul is saying. And he says, I want your faith to rest not on the Epicurean philosophers or the Stoic uh, teachings or, or the teachings of Plato or, or Socrates or any other great Greek philosopher. He says, I want you to have everything resting on Jesus Christ and his power. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Resurrection power means that you believe that God can do the impossible in any situation. When Mary asked Gabriel, how is it possible that me, a virgin, could actually have a son? And he said very simply, it is uh, what you, it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And that would be my exhortation today, is simply this, that let your faith, don't, don't rely on your own understanding, but simply acknowledge him and he will direct your path, as it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and allow God's power to be working in your life today. And with that thought in mind, I'm going to pray for you today. Now, there's a couple of scriptures I want to bring to you today that will emphasize that point. And the first one is uh, Philippians 4.19, where Paul says, my God can supply every need according to his riches and glory. God today wants to supply whatever your need is. Now, I know that we are dealing with shrinkflation and inflation and all kinds of uh, pressures on families today and individuals financially. And I know it's difficult these days, but you know what? God can meet that. You know, I lived through the late 70s and early 80s, and I was raising families at that time, and I saw God supply every need every single time. I never missed a mortgage payment. I never missed a car payment. Never missed anything. Why? Because God was supplying. And when I needed something, God supplied, and God can do the same for you today. Also as well, Second uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says, uh, by his stripes were healed. So today, whether it's healing or provision, God can bring that today. So Father, in this moment, we are praying for provision and for healing for those that are watching today. Lord, we know today that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rophi, our healer. And in every situation, Lord, no matter what we face today or in the future, we put our trust in you. It's like the old song says, Lord, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. And Lord, that's what we're going to do. We're going to thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love. We are going to thank you, Lord, for your provision today. And Lord, we just want to thank you for each and every wonderful touch today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to sing an old song that I just found here in the hymn book, and it's called, I've Got Peace Like a River, I've Got Love Like an Ocean, I've Got Joy Like a Fountain. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like in my soul I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul well, today, I would love for you to have that peace, that joy, and that love that only God can bring. So, Father, today, thank you for the wonderful teachings of the Word of God, the songs that we've sung, and the prayers that we've offered today. 
It is such a wonderful privilege, Lord, to be able to have those in our lives. And we ask this blessing in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I would love to have you join us for an in-person service today. At 11 a.m., we meet at Cornerstone Hall, that's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have you join us. Our doors open at 1045, and our service starts at 11 a.m. Thank you for joining me this morning for this service. God bless you, and have yourself a great and godly day.